The Lord caused his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. For the since 28, 2008, we started a Bible study in our home and we've been growing and we moved and several places and now we're here. So from 28, 2008, the 8808 until now, how many years is that? 13 years. In August. In August, it be 13 years, right? Okay. The average church, the average church in New York, I don't know about any other place, but the, the average church in New York State or the New York or whole, the lifespan of that church, the average church or small church is struggling and going, the average church, average lifespan of that church is five years. Five years and then it disappears and it dies and just disintegrates. Five years, the average lifespan. And that's uh, 75, 65 to 75 percent of those churches, little storefront churches, and then it dies and goes away. But since 2008, 8808, we have been moving from shifting and moving from place to place, and we are here now. And I believe in God for some great things. My wife and I are doing some things in the background and believe in God and we meet with some people and we're doing some things in the background and we are praying and we are believing God for some great things. There is no doubt within my mind or within my heart that it's okay, let me go. There is no doubt in my mind or in my heart that the Lord is with us. And He has been shifting and positioning us in different ways and shape and molding and making us. Often time the Lord will take a minister, a pastor, young pastor, old pastor, whatever he is, and he'll put them on the backside of the desert for a while and he'll make them and he'll mold them. They'll go through trials and troubles and ups and downs, falling down, getting up. But it's the making process that God had with him. And then when he's fit, when he's ready, he'll put you on the forefront and expose you and let you know this is it. I believe that sooner or later we are on the verge of being established in a way that the ministry will explode and triumphant and some great things will happen. For the next couple of weeks, except for the Sundays that my wife ministers on uh, when I'm at work and I'm hoping that will come to an end soon when I don't have to use that secular job anymore and I believe God is in the world to do that, we will see. But I'm believing him. For the next couple of weeks, as I minister, I'm going to be ministering pointedly about made up mind. Made up mind to serve the Almighty God. I'm going to point out some things to you and as a congregation, those who are on Zoom and on a whole, what a made up mind look like. I'm going to be talking to you about the benefits of a made-up mind. And I'm going to also talk to you about the downfall of wavering and putting your attention to other gods or serving other things or putting other things before God. In order for, the, for me to do that, I must lay a foundation so you can understand where I'm going. And, uh, I'm going to bring you back a little, in a, in a little bit of the history first. And as I go through a little bit of history, I'm going to explain to you some things and minister to you some things and then show you where exactly I'm going. But I also want you to keep your Bibles open. I want you to keep your Bibles open. Many of churches now, when they, 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 they hit the scriptures and and after they hear the scriptures, they read it to you and then you just close your Bible and you listen to the minister speak and after that you jump up and shout and you run around and you sing a few songs and you pray and get off and you dismissed. I no longer want that. This, that. That has never been our forte. That has never been what we do. I always encourage you to keep your Bibles open. 
For those of you who are using electrical devices like uh, your iPad or your phone, it would be nice if you could get a Bible in your hand and mark it up. Do some work on a notebook. If you don't understand where you're coming from, you're not going to understand where you're going. History is never written by the person normally who reads it. History is normally written by the person who's telling his story. And oftentimes, the story or the history of the person who's writing the history, oftentimes, he tells it how he wants to tell it to favor himself. However, I want to, you to keep your Bibles open, and I just want to go over some things with you first. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. And if you can get this under your belt, and if you can get an understanding of what I'm actually saying to you and what the benefits are when you have made a mind to serve God, then you will understand your struggles, you'll understand why you're defeated in certain areas, why you fall, or why certain things happen. This, this Bible is the Word of God. It's alive. It's truth. God never lies. When He gives you the Word of God, there's no other religion in the face of the earth where you can actually pick up their religious book and look at it and read it and see everything that's stated in that book come to pass. No other religion except the Bible. Christianity. None of it. So, I want you this morning to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. The book of 2 Kings. And I'm going to read from verse 2 Kings chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 8. Then I'm going to go back and give you a little background and some history so you can understand where I'm going. And I want you, if you don't have a paper Bible then, uh, and you, you want to get one, then I can get you one. Or if you have a device, you can, if you don't have a paper Bible and you want to use a device, then use it. If you, have, if you don't have a Bible, I have one here. It's one that I use on the pulpit. I'll get someone to sit beside you and go through to find the scriptures for you as fast as possible. This, I want you to be a part of this and I want you to clearly understand where I'm going. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. You can stand or you can stand for the reading of the, the word of God. We're reading from 2 Kings chapter 18. And I read from verse 1 to verse 8. Oh, hallelujah. Here begin at the reading of God's holy word. Now it came to pass in the third year of Moshe, son of Elah, king of Israel that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abia, Abi, the daughter of, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and they called it Nehushta. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all of the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. For he claimed to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went, went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza, and the border thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fence of cities. Let us pray. O oh God, your sovereign. From this lecture this morning, Lord, I acknowledge, I open my lips and I declare that there is no other God beside you. 
All of the gods are idols made by man's hand, wooden, stone, and metal. But though are the living and the true God, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who called it Abraham from the Ur of the Chaldees and made a covenant with him, the God of David, the God of Isaac and Jacob, you are our God. Father, I come to you this morning and I ask for you to give me a mind sharp, O oh God, to comprehend what you're saying to your people. I ask for you to grant unto me the tongue of the learned, sharp, witty, but yet precise to preach your word or to teach your word this morning, Lord God. Spirit of the living God, I ask for the anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. I ask for eternity to hear us, Lord God, that your people may hear and understand and comprehend what you're saying. Spirit of the living God, I ask for you to move through every aisle, every pew, every seat. Touch the minds, the ears, and the hearts of your people, Lord God, that they may not only hear, but that they may adhere to what is being said, and obey, and come under the word, Lord God. Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer this morning. Father, I ask for true repentance, Lord God, of hearts today. Father, those who are tuning in by Zoom, Father, I ask you to grab their attention that they may be so steadfast that they may be locked into you, Lord God, and hear what you're actually saying in this season. Father, I thank you for doing it. I thank you for the anointing. Send the anointing, Lord, and I thank you for it even now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. I want to give you a little bit of, oh, hallelujah, Father, I thank you. I want to give you a little bit of background or give you a little bit of history as it relates to the scripture that we just read and where I'm going and you'll understand. There are two related but distinct concepts that shape the history of Israel and the Jewish people, and even believers on whole, two distinct things that consistently happen to the Jewish people. You know that we got our, our, our religion, we got the Bible from the Jewish people. You realize that. You know that it's because of the Jews why we have the Bible and have the Word of God. The Bible was written by Jews, by Jewish men. The story of the Bible are about Jewish men. And it tells you about how we were grafted in as Gentiles. But I want you to understand there are two distinct things that consistently happen to the Jews. The two distinct things are the diaspora and exiles. The diaspora and the exile. The diaspora is the forced removal of a majority of a population or people. Stay with me. A population, a major, a forced removal of a population or people from their homeland. Namely, when this diaspora takes place, they will remove the skilled people, like for the, the, the country is conquered or the nation is conquered, they remove the skill of the people and the upper class, people who are skilled, teachers, lawyers, doctors who are skilled and, 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 and like um, carpentry, the, the men who are skilled, they remove them. And the upper class, the one with money, they will conquer that land and they remove that people and bring them into another land. This is what happened to Israel. The name Israel came about because of Jacob wrestling with the angel of God and tri triumphing, prevailing, and the Lord touched him. What is your name? He said, I'm going to let you until you bless me. What is your name? My name is Jacob. I'm the con man. I'm the trickster. He said, well, your name is no longer going to be called Jacob, but your name is going to be called Israel. Israel had 12 sons. 
And out of the 12 stones, he made up the 12 tribes of Israel. These 12, 12 sons of the 12 tribes of Israel, they were people of God. They were commanded by God to serve the living God. God called Abraham. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Esau and Jacob. God said, Jacob of I love, but Esau I hate him. So Jacob was a chosen. And after Jacob, he named Jacob and Israel the same thing. So he came to the yeah, stay with me. So he named Rina. When, when the transformation comes, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And Israel means a prince that has prevailed. Your power. He said, You'll prevail because you've wrestled with God and you'll prevail. Your power with God and with man, meaning your favor. Henceforth, God said, I've set my, my name upon you and call you you're mine. He let you know in no uncertain terms that you are mine. Israel became a nation. And as they became a nation, they begin to serve the Lord and walk with God. And God did wonderful things for them. They prospered. They flourished. They had cattle. They had land. They had men servants and maid servants. They have uh, gold and silver. They prospered. And after a while, they begin to dwindle and begin to serve other gods. And God called them to go into exile. I want to share something. There were several Jewish exiles. The first one occurred in 734 BC under Tiglat Pileser. And you'll find that in 2 Kings 15, verse 15, 29. This calamity went about in two phases. In 722, the second phase began and the Shalmaneser and his successor, Sargon. I'm going somewhere, just wait, just hang in here. When the city of Samaria was destroyed and the northern kingdom ceased to exist. I'm giving you some history so when I get back in the scripture, you know where I'm going and why things are happening to your lives and why you can't prosper and why things are, why you, one minute. I mean, let me, before I go for it, let me ask you something. I'm going to find a point when your life go up and things are going good and all of a sudden it just drops and you, or you get to a certain place in your life where you rise to a certain ashland and you know you sense within yourself that you're destined to do something greater and better. You just can't seem to break the glass ceiling. Something is holding you back. Are anyone here and feel that way? Yes. Or only, or it only happened to me? Well, if you are one of those that you're sitting here, hang in there. I'm going to break every chain this morning. I slept here yesterday in the church for a little while for a couple of hours, just laying on and just talk to my father. For the last couple of days, he's been talking to me. And I, 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 gotta get, I, got to get, I got to go back to basics so you can understand. So the first diaspora, when the Jews were taken away from their country and brought to another kingdom, was where this particular nation the northern kingdom ceased to exist the next major exile came with the destruction of the southern kingdom Judah this is where Jerusalem was destroyed and sacked and the temple burned by the Babylonians and they were carried away in exile the next one came about with Rome. So you had the Syrians, they destroyed them. Then you had the Babylonian, then you had Rome. Destroyed after Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonian and burned. The Jews were scattered and brought, forced brought into exile by Babylonian king. Then when the Romans came, they destroyed it. That also took place in two phases. In 
in phase one, this Roman emperor sacked the city, the temple was rebuilt by Herod, and the Roman general, Emperor Titus, destroyed Jerusalem, burned the city, burned down Herod's temple, and, and, and the historian will tell you that Herod's temple was gloriously built, and some of them say it was even much better than Solomon's temple. I don't know how true it is, but they, 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 they describe it as when, when, when you look at it from a distance, you made it all the pure marble and trimmed it with gold, and when you look at it, it was dazzling and it was beautiful. And it was destroyed by the Romans. The second phase of that destruction came under Emperor Hadrian in, 100 and, uh, in 132 to 136 BC. And in that destruction, Emperor Adrian made a decree that no Jew was supposed to be living in Jerusalem. So they were literally moved again from the, the rest of them were just moved and taken off to Rome and they were scattered all over the world. Yet, through all of this, you may ask your pastor, if they are the people of God, why is this happening? I'm getting there. Good question. Glad you asked. All of this, they are God's people, yet they are driven from their land, brought to another land into slavery, and people ruling over them. I want you to turn your Bible with me. I want you to look at the scripture. Turn with me to, as a matter of fact, you can turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And my wife, I'd like you to read from verse 26, verse 64. You're going to read Deuteronomy 28. You're going to read from verse 64 to verse 68, and I want you to read it very loudly. And I want you to pay close attention because I'm going somewhere. You'll understand. I'm putting you on a path this morning where your lives are going to be liberated if you hear. And listen, the Bible says, He that has hear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. Oh, I'm going to minister to you this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 28, reading from verse 64 to 68. I want you to stand up and read it very loudly. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Stay on stage. So it's telling you, God is saying, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what's going to happen to you. You're going to be driven from all and scattered all over the country, all over the different countries. You're going to be driven from the land that you live in. And this is what will happen to you. You might have a pastor. Why has this happened? Glad you asked. Good question. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 29. My love. Deuteronomy 29. Read from verse 24 to 28. Deuteronomy 29. Verse 24 to 28. Amen. Even all the nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land, 
to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. Do you understand why it happened? Yes. When Israel became a nation and King David reigned, first king of Israel, second one, the second king of Israel, the first king was King Saul. One of the things that the people did After God brought them into the land, they, from the exodus of God, brought them in from scattering them for a while. The Bible said that they looked at the other nations. Be careful what you, what you concentrate. Be careful what you look at. The Bible said they looked at the other nations. And the other nations were less than them. Because God drove them out and gave them their land. But they looked at the leadership structure of the other nations. And they said, we want to be like them. We want a king. They have a king. We want a king like them too. Forgetting that the king of kings was your king. The God was your king. Stay with me. The Bible said that after they looked and they saw what the other kings or the ruler of the hand of their nation, the Bible said they lusted after them and said, that's what we want. And after they did that, they went to, and there's a thing, there's a reason why they did it. The Bible said God had appointed a prophet of them to, to intervene and, and to speak to God and to come back from God and tell them, we would work from God and tell them what God was saying. That prophet was Samuel. The Bible said that Samuel grew up in the temple. He was, he was a request by a mother. Samuel didn't just come like that. The mother, the, the, the Samuel's mother, just, just, just prayed to God that she was barren and she couldn't have any children. And the Bible said she cried out and she said, give me a man child. If you give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. But I just want to be able to have a man child. I know I'm barren, no, but I just want to have a child so that people can see that I'm a woman and I'm functioning as a woman. Bible said that she cried and she, she, she was in a rivalry between another woman. One husband she had and the husband had two women. Anna and Penina. Penina would provoke her. The Bible said that she prayed and cried out to God and said, give me a man child. And if you give me a man child, I'll give it back to you. The Bible said that God hear her crying. When she had a child, the first child was Samuel. God opened her womb and asked him to a prayer and gave her Samuel. The Bible said that she brought him back to the temple. She kept her word. You, you gotta be careful about people who don't keep your word. They ask God for things and God gave it to them. They don't keep your word. You get in trouble and God gets you. They say, if you get me on that servant and you don't keep your word, God is watching. Church you never say, God is watching you. The Bible said she went back to the temple. Oh, I have a boy, I, I, I have a problem with keeping my word sometimes with God. I, 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 I laid here yesterday in a couple of days and I said, Lord, please give me another chance. Give me a chance and let me hear your voice and know that this is you. So I obey you, Lord God, whatever it is, just show me. And the Bible said you brought him back to the temple and gave him to Eli the priest. So this young kid, a little baby, being raised in the temple, he became acquainted with the things of God, with the precepts of God, with how to run the temple, and how temple, temple life goes, and he grew up in the temple, he knew temple protocol. It's like he grew up in church, so he knew church protocol. He knew when to say hallelujah, he knew when to worship, he knew there's a time of fasting, he knew how to serve communion, he knew how to burn an incense, he knew the protocol of the church. He grew up in the temple under a priest. The Bible said after a while, Eli became complacent. He had two sons, Ophni and Phineas. And they begin to do evil. And as they begin to do evil, they begin to sleep around with the daughters in the church, in the, in the temple. And take money from the church and steal from the house of God. The sacrifice that would come to the house of God, they would take it for themselves instead of taking their portion instead of giving it to God first. And the Bible said that God warned him about his son, hang with the people. The Bible said God taught him about his sons. And after God talked to him about his son, he would like, that, that, I mean, he didn't break a leg. He said, you know what you're doing is wrong. He said, I mean, firm, I said, this is what break, 
break their neck, do something, let them know that. Do something, let them know that this is God. You don't, you don't play with God. And the Bible said, of God gave him a word. The Bible, called, the, Bible, the Bible said that God began to call him young Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. And he heard the voice of God and he got up and he ran to Eli. He said, hey, here am I, you call me. He said, I'm not calling you. How soon are the men what we do when we, 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 we grow up around the leader? We hear the voice of God calling us and we run to the leader because the voice of God normally sounds like a leader. So he ran to Eli. And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go lie on again. He went and he laid on again. Hang with me, I'm going somewhere. He went and he laid on again. And he heard the voice of God again and he got up and he ran back to Eli again. The Bible said that when he ran to Eli, Eli said, No, no, no. I didn't call him. Go again. And he said that the Bible said, The ear, the light of the temple, the lamp of the temple went out because the light of the temple, so the lamp was supposed to be continually burning 24 7, 365 days. That light, that light in the temple should have continued to be burning. And the Bible said, Ear, the light of the temple, the light of the went out. And I mean, that somebody wasn't attending to something. Somebody wasn't, doing, the priest wasn't attending the fire of God and the light of God. Something went wrong. When the light of God go out in your life, then you're in trouble. There's a light of God in your life. When it begins to dwindle and go out, you know you're in trouble. You better find a place where the light of God is and get back to the place of the altar and see God when things do to happen. But the Bible said, uh, the priest realized that God was calling the young man and he said, go back and lay down again. When you hear his voice, say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. And he went back and sure enough, the Lord called him, Samuel, Samuel. And he heard the voice of God and he looked at him and said, Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. And the Lord told him, Tell Eli, this is what I'm going to do. I warned him before about his sons and he didn't listen. So I'm going to do a thing in Israel. In one day, I'm going to, I'm going to kill both of his sons. And in one day, I'm going to cause Israel to fall. One day, I'm going to take my glory, put my glory in the end of his hand. And the Bible said that one day there was a, there was a war. In the morning he wake up and he said to Samuel, tell me Samuel what the Bible said. Samuel was a fearful to go, go and tell him. And he said, Samuel, tell me what the Lord said. Don't hide it from me. And Samuel tell him, this, this is what the Lord said. One day I'm bringing judgment. I'm going to kill your two sons and, and, I, and the glory, my glory is going to be departed. This is what's going to happen. And he said, this is the Lord. It's confirmation. God never does anything unless he confirms it. Hear me this morning, people of God. I'm, I'm bringing you back. I, where this church is going or where this congregation is going, where this ministry is going, i got to get back to basic and get to our refocus because the church is going to explode and you need to know where you belong. Amen. So the Bible said it was a war. The Israelites went to, to war and they were beaten. And they came back and they said, the, the, the Bible said the Philistines put them to flight and they ripped them and beat them and they went over and said, oh, we get the ark. Let, let's go back and get the, 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 the ark of the covenant the, where the promises of God is. Let's go the, where the presence of God is. Let's bring it into battle. Because when they see and they, they, they know that the God is with us. So because God was with us, was not with us when we went to the first battle, we're going to go back and get the ark of the covenant now where God is, where the presence of God is. We're going to bring it in the midst of the battle. And the enemy and then we're going to defeat them. The Bible said they grabbed the Ark of the Covenant and they went into battle. And the Philistines defeated them, routed them, and took the Ark of the Covenant from them. The Bible said a runner came back and told Eli, ripped, he was ripped in his clothes and went, ripping in the tourist clothes and went back to the priest. Ran back to the priest and said, hey, this is what happened. Your two sons, Ophni and Phineas, they just died in battle. So one day, two sons got killed. The two ones that were messing up in the church. They died. The Bible said Eli the priest was a big man, a fat man. The Bible said that he had a daughter who was well ahead of a child. And the third Eli, and Eli, not only were your two sons killed, but the ark of the covenant, the presence of God was taken also. The Bible said when Eli heard it, he pitched over back way and he died, frightened knowing that the glory and the presence of God, the thing that represents the presence of God was taken, and he died. And he had a daughter who was well with a child, and they ran and told her, your father Eli is dead. When she heard it, the Bible said she became a travail, a dead bird. To a man child. And she called the name Ica. 
Ichabod. She called the child the Ichabod, meaning the glory of the party. So Israel wanted a king because of what the priest's sons were doing. They were messing up and cheating and doing all kinds, sleeping around in the temple and said, we don't want a, we want a king. What the ministers do and what the preachers and the pastors do can cause people to turn away from God and serve other God if they don't do the right thing. There's a weight on the shoulder of the ministers who minister in holy things. You've got to, if your life is upside down, get back in order and serve the living God and do it. People are watching you. I've been through some stuff. And I see the hand of God move. And I see the hand of God is about to move again. And the Lord is saying, let me, let me warn you, don't mess up again. Let, let me warn you, don't mess up again. Because you're messing up again, I'll rip you. People might say, oh, there's a great, yeah. He said, I'm the Lord, I die, I change not. If you sons of Jacob are consumed. And the Bible said that they desired a king and they got Saul. And Saul messed up big time. God took him from the from, from chasing jackass and made him a king. And, he, and God gave him two instructions to do things and he failed, failed miserably. And after he failed, God said to God, said, I said, Samuel, get me, Samuel, fool your own good Lord and go down to Jesse because I got me a king there. My eyes are on somebody else. God said that he anointed David. Took him from the sheepfold. God had dumb sheep and taken care of them and God anointed him. And eventually, circumstances, you know this story, eventually David became king. God made a covenant with David and said, I will not take my glory out of my presence. I will not leave or fail to have a man sit on the throne of David because you're good. You're a good king. And David messed up. But he repented. There's a thing about when you mess up. You don't go to God and say, I didn't mean to do it, Lord. You know I'm not guilty. You are the lying one that cut a line out and tell the Lord the truth. Tell him what you did. I did it, I like it, but Lord, I'm having a problem with it. Help me. Amen. When David was confronted, David said, I have sinned. Unlike Saul. Saul didn't repent. Saul said, the people made me do it. So the people caused me to do it. No, no, no. David said, I have sinned. Don't blame no one for your mess. Don't blame no one for your junk. All of your junk. And you change your life and turn it around. Amen. The Bible said after he did that, God said, Okay, I can deal with that. I forgive you. David even promised sentence to himself. And the Bible said that David began to walk right with God and things began to happen with him. And David had come from a dysfunctional, he had a dysfunctional marriage, he had a dysfunctional family, he had some dysfunctional children because of one thing. One thing that you do in your life can derail and mess up your life completely. And sometimes because of the mercy, it can mess up your life completely, but it's because of the mercy of God why, why, why some of us still survive. Hey, what is here? So the Bible said after David died, he had a son by the name of Solomon. And the Bible said Solomon began to do that which was right. He sought the Lord, the Lord, uh, you know, why, Lord, you did for me what you did for my father, what you did, Lord, I love what you did for my father. You see the prudent to put a man, put me and my father to Lord, the Lord said, What do you want? He said, Give me wisdom that I may know how to govern this thy people. Why is it? The Lord said, You asked something, why? Because you did this, you asked, you didn't ask for wealth. You didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for the life of your enemies. You asked for wisdom. He's not telling you that you're not supposed to ask for wealth. Don't, don't, don't miss it. He's not telling you that you're not supposed to ask for the hell, the, the, the death and the destruction of your enemies. He's not telling you that you're not to ask for him for long life. He didn't tell you that. He said, well, the primary thing that he asked for was wisdom to govern prudently, to do justice and judgment. The Lord said, because you asked for this, I'm going to give you it. And because you didn't ask for you didn't ask for wealth or long life or the death of your enemy, you asked for wisdom. Behold, because you asked for wisdom, I'm also gonna add to you long life, wealth, and I'm gonna give you the, the, the make your enemy destroy your enemy. All that I'm gonna give you. But there's a condition to it. You've got to walk before me. And if your children walk before 
before me and do justice and judgment, then I will stay with them and, and mingle with them and you prosper. The Bible said that Solomon started out well. And after he got to do well, the Bible said that he began to marry strange women. The Bible tells you that one of the things that God said to them when they, when they came into the land, don't marry their daughters. Don't give your sons to their daughters to marry them. Don't let your daughters marry your sons. Don't let your sons marry their daughters because they'll turn their hearts from the Lord to serve other gods. And the Bible said that Solomon went and married Pharaoh's daughter. How do you marry the daughter of those who were previously kept the people in captive? And the Bible said that he married the Zidonians and he married all kinds of different women. The man had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He was getting it. He was getting it left, right. He married all these strange women. And after a while, the Bible said when he gets old, never stop when you're young. When you're young, you're married. No, I'm not doing that. That's not, no, I'm not going to serve this. No, I'm not going to. The Bible said when he gets old, they turn his heart from following God. And the Bible said that the Lord warned him dreams and visions. And the Bible said he wouldn't take heed. The Bible said he ordered a prophet by the name of Ahijah. And Ahijah met one of Solomon's son, one of Solomon's servant. And he said to him, this is what the Lord said. I want Solomon he won't listen. So Lord, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm taking these Ten kingdom is twelve kingdom, but I'm taking ten of them and I'm giving them to you. His name was um, Jeroboam. I'm going to give Jeroboam. The prophet Abijah met Jeroboam and said, yeah, a servant, not the king's lineage. I'm taking ten tribes and I'm giving them to you. And I'm only going to leave one with the tribe of Israel. One. They were two. They were one of the Levites, so that was counts. I'm going to leave one with them, Judah. The Bible said that just like what the Lord promised came to pass. Ten tribes were given to Jeroboam. One tribe left. The Bible said that the kingdom split. The northern and the southern kingdom. So when I talk about the history, I'm talking about the northern kingdom fall and the southern kingdom, you understand where I'm going. The Bible said that Jeroboam, after he began to reign, he looked and saw Judah, all the people of Judah began to worship over there where uh, the temple was. He figured out this, you know, it's only a matter of time, I have ten tribes, the majority of the tribe. It's only a matter of time before they're going to leave me and go back to Judah and worship over in Jerusalem. So instead of, in my fear of them going back to Jerusalem and not staying with me, I'm going to raise me up two big bulls, two Two, two, two cows made out of gold or whatever, and tell him, this is the place where you should worship. Don't want to go back to Jerusalem. <laughs> fear, fear will drive you to do crazy stuff. God gave him ten tribes. The same God who prophesied and tell you, this is what I'm going to do for you. Gave it to you. As a matter of fact, you weren't entitled to it. You're not of the lineage of David. As a matter of fact, you're just a servant. You're not entitled to anything. But because my people rebel against me and serve other God, I'm going to rip the kingdom over of their hand and split it again. I had it in ten tribes. So the Bible said that out of fear. Don't you realize the same God who gave you the ten kingdoms can help you hold on to them? Out of fear, he raised up two bulls and tell him, come on Israel, this is your God. Bow down to them and worship him and offer sacrifice to them. And then everywhere in the Bible that you go and look from Genesis all the way over, even into the New Testament, you hear this name, Jeroboam. The Bible said, they departed not from the sins of Jeroboam who made Israel to sin. You never, the Bible, I want to really look at it. Me and my wife were looking at it a couple of weeks ago. It never said who caused Israel to sin. It said who made Israel to sin. The sins of Jeroboam made me. I don't give you a choice. Yes. When you made me sin, me like, but back 
Jerusalem against the wall. If I go up to Jerusalem, there's a chance that you might, you might knock me off or do something that I can't do. You might say, go up there, worship. The Bible said, he made Israel to sin. The Bible said, that the Lord began to cut Israel short. When you begin to serve idols and other gods, you're going to begin to lose things. And if you don't turn, you eventually lose your life. You lose your wealth, your health, your money, your possession, your marriage, your children. Things will begin to go haywire. Listen to me. I'm telling you how to correct and, and, and refocus and re how, 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 how they say refocus, recalibrate what you're doing. Begin to serve the Lord God. So because of that, the Bible said that God allowed the enemy to begin to whip them. And as God began to allow the enemy to whip them, the kingdom divided them. One king, if you look from Genesis, from, from all the way I said, from first uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. First, from you look from first Samuel all the way over to second Samuel, from, from Saul, from the first king when Saul began to reign, all the way over to all the kings, you're going to hear one thing always. And this king began to reign. And they give him his age. He was this this age when he began to reign. And the Bible you hear here. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But majority of the time you hear. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. You're gonna hear that. And as they continue to hear that, the Bible said he gave them several examples of good kings. And the Bible gave them several examples of good kings and bad kings. And every time the good kings reign, the country prospered. It reminds me somewhat of the United States. When the forefathers who discovered the United States began to do right and prosper, the country prospered, things were happening and things went well, the enemies of the United States feared them. When another administration come in and they did wrong and they begin to do sacrilege and do all kind of mess, the country goes in a, in a downfall and decline. And their eyes are open to see it. And now we are going through coronavirus and you're wondering what's going to happen. But baby, let me tell you, we are on a collision course and we are in a shift. You better straight up and make up Mind. I'm talking this morning about a made up mind to serve the living God, not just to serve God, but to serve the living God. Only one God there is, and this is not a dead God. He is the living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He's Jehovah, the one who made the sun, the moon, and the star. The living God. You gotta have a made up mind. It's something that you got a purpose in your heart. I will have no other God before him. I will put no other God before him. I will put nothing before him. He is first and foremost in my life. In him I live and move and breathe and have my being. All that I have is because of him. All that I ever hope to be is because of him. All that I desire to be is because of him. All that I want, he's going to give it to me. All that I have is because of him. And in him I put my trust. I'm not going to put my trust in man. And the Bible said that as they begin to rebel and do opposite things, here's where we're going to want to share something. Turn your Bible to 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 16. I'm going to show you something. 2 Kings chapter 16. And I want you to read verses 1 to 6. Read. Read for me. 2 Kings chapter 16. Reading from verses 1 to 6. Come on. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. Mm -hmm. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, mm -hmm. whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense in the high places, and on the hills and under every green tree. Uh -huh. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, mm -hmm. came up to Jerusalem to war. Mm -hmm. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered mm -hmm. Elath to Syria, mm -hmm. and drave the Jews from Elath. Mm -hmm. And the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there unto this day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, finish reading. The Bible 
Bible said after they did that, notice what happened. When you begin to serve other gods, notice what happened to you. You begin to lose things. The Bible said you begin to lose a portion of land. His enemy will come up and begin to besiege him to take things and begin to destroy the country. Stay, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Don't, don't pay attention to them. The Bible said this is what happened. The Syrians. An army, a, a person, and a nation that he would normally defeat easily came upon war and took a piece of the land. And if you go on to, I'm going to show you how desperate he came. Look at verse 8, verse 7, read verse 7. Go all the way down. Come on, I tell you what to stop. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hands of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. So here it is, instead of turning to God and looking for help, he looked to another man. He looked to, for help in another place. The Bible said, Cursed is you who look to man, put his trust in man, but to put your trust in God. The Bible said, Cursed is you who put his trust in man. Man cannot help you. You have to look to Jesus. You have to look to God. Look to God for your help. The Bible David said, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. You, if you want help, you gotta go back to God. Continue to the verse 8. Go on. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. In other words, the person that you are asking for help, you're paying them to help you. And look where he took the money from. Out of the house of the Lord, the offering and the tithe. He took the offering and the tithe that is belonged in the house of God and gave it to another king. Come and help me over here. No, no. I mean, I mean you, you, you've got to be desperate. Are you stupid? Are you fool? You've got no sense. You collect the offering and the tithe that belong to God and you get your in trouble and you take that and you pay off another king to come in and fight and help you. Read. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, and carried the people of it captive to Kerr and slew Razin. So yeah, I pay you for it, A Cooper, you help me. And help me defeat my enemy, you kill the one who come up against me. Look what he did. Read verse 9. Verse 10. Verse 10. Read. And King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser. The same one who he paid to help him. Oh, I'm glad that you helped me, man. I gotta come out and greet you. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I get to pay some money and come up and help me. So, man, you did good. I went on an nation. Read. King of Assyria. Uh -huh. And saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof. Notice what he did. He went to the king that helped him, that he paid to help him. In other words, let me tell you, it's an alliance. The United States have several alliances. They call them um, allies. Uh, allies. Like, like France is one of the United States allies. And, and Germany and, and England. These are uh, The United States are uh, uh, Australia. The United States and Canada, they have some powerful allies. So you notice when, they, when the, the, the war in the Persian Gulf and um, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and wanted to take over the oil, all the allies come to the uh, you, they come in an agreement with the United States and attack Iraq and destroy it and really shock it and really did some nasty, really wreck it and, 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 deliver, you know, and deliver them because uh, our allies come together and defeat them. So Kuwait was saved. It's something like that. So he went down to the one who helped him. And the Bible said that he saw an altar there. And he said, hmm, if you're so strong and you beat my enemy, this must be the right God. So he sent back to the priest and said, hey, you know something? I saw an altar over here, and this God must be powerful. So I want you to make an altar just like this one that I see, and raise it up for me until I come home. And of course, he went back, and the, the priest built the altar, and he went back, and he began to worship and serve the same other God instead of serving Jehovah God. And of course, in, instead of going back to God, he's sinking deeper and deeper and deeper in despair, into sin. The Bible said he did that. And an under God. And I want you now to look over, if you look over at 2 Kings 16, verse 7. I'm going to show you something. 2 Kings 16, verse 7. You're, you're, that's what, no, go over to go over to 2 Kings verse 17. I'm going to show you something. 
No, 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 no. 2 Kings chapter 17. I want you to read 2 Kings chapter 17. Read it from verse 1. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in uh -huh. Samaria over Israel uh -huh. nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Uh -huh. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, uh -huh. and Hoshea became his servant. So in other words, the enemy came up against him and he became his servant. Read. And gave him presents. Gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Uh -huh. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Let, let me tell you what's going on here. The enemy come up against him, and he said, okay, let me serve you then. And he, he, he's traveling the fence. And while he's traveling the fence, he sent a message over Egypt. Hey, come on, this guy, man, I don't want to pay no money more. Come and help me. And the, 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 the king of Assyria found out that locked him up and put him in prison. So he's in trouble again. Serving other gods, looking to man for help. Wait, I'm going somewhere, I'm almost finished. When I'm finishing, it's going to go on for a little while, a couple of weeks, but you're going to see where I'm going. Turn your Bible over and read the same chapter, 1717. Um, Look at verse 7 to verse 9. Read for me. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, uh -huh. which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Where he brought them up from? Egypt. Egypt, out of trouble. Every time God gets them out of Egypt, out of trouble, he always reminds them, I am the Lord thy God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. I brought them the house of bondage. Don't you have no other God before me? God has no problem in letting you know who he is. Amen. We have a problem when people do things for us and why, why you gotta make the world know you do it for me? <laughs> I'm no different from God. I help you. God help you. God help me to help you. No, it's trained up on fly right, Turkey. But why everybody gotta know about it? No, give God the glory. He brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He tell you, you are in Egypt, you are in the house of bondage. This is what happened to you. And I am the God that brought you up out of it. Continue. From under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, uh -huh. and had feared other gods, uh -huh. and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel which they had made. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. Secretly. And they built them high places in all their cities. No, from the tower of the watchmen uh, to uh, uh, the uh, uh, city. It, 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 it bothers me. What kind of tower have you built and put in front of God? What kind of tower have you built? What kind of evil are you hiding? Listen, the Bible said they did secretly. The Bible said you can't hide things from God. Dark is not light to him or a light. When you think you're in dark, he can see it. Oh, when you think oh, God is not seen. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord roll to and fro the earth. Behold the evil and the good. Just turn to him and say, God is watching. Watching. God is watching. Whatever you think you're doing, no, no, baby, no, 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 no. Don't think you're getting away with it. God is watching you. He's watching how much emphasis you put on His word. When was the last time you pick up the word and be in a kind of quiet place and begin to ask the Lord, Lord, my life is in a mess. I don't know where I'm going. I, I know I'm in this world. I know that I'm, so, I'm supposed to be doing something great, but I lost my way. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. I know I'm existing. I don't know. Why am I existing? Lord, I'm going to dedicate my life to you to get the, to get instruction, to get the map for you to show me what you want me to do, where you want me to go, what should I do, how do I go about it? Lord, I'm going to spend the time, I'm going to give you my life. You'll be Lord of my life, not in part, but in whole. When you give the life to when you give your life to God and say, Lord, for you I live, for you I die, I want to serve you. And you put your life in his hand and stop going. I'm talking about being purposeful. I'm talking about I'm a man of mine to serve the living and the almighty God. Amen. That half stepping. The Bible said after they did that, the Bible said God began to rip them again. Israel rejected God again. In verse 17, in, in 2 Kings 17, verse 17 says, And they called their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. 
and used divinations and enchantment and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. God is saying, when you do this, you're provoking me. You're me. <laughs> I pray hard. When you do it, you provoke me. I wipe you out. And you continue to do it. What are you putting before God? What are you spending so much of your time with? What are you doing that you, you, your mind is a mess? Is that the phone or the iPod? Whatever, whatever you're doing to put again, put up against God. God is watching it. And don't, don't say, oh, he, 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 how come he doesn't mess me up here? No, he's giving you time to repent, baby. Right. He's giving you time. Don't think that because he has an act, he's giving you time to get it right. He's giving you time to turn it light, turn your life around. Oh, but you're living in a time of grace. Yes, there is grace. That's why he hasn't wiped you out yet. But he said, I'm not always going to be like that. There's gonna, you either turn or suffer the consequences. He said, you turn or burn. There's going to come a time when you wonder why you're going. Certain things are happening and certain people are prospering. They're doing certain things that are good. And their life is going up and up and up and they're prospering. Oh, oh they're all together. Check their background. What are they doing? What are they doing that is right? What, are, what kind of relationship do they have with God? You ask yourself, what kind of relationship do I have with him? Is he my God? Is he my Lord? Or on a full-time basis? Or is my Lord only when I want something from him? You've got to check. Listen, I'm almost there. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I want you to look at what he did. Turn over now to 2 Kings 18. We talk about the bad king. You, you look, you, you, we talk about Ahaz. We talk about these other bad, a couple of the other bad kings. Here is a good king, and I'm going to show you something, point or something very pointed to you. Turn to 18 and read 1. Read 1, 2, and 3 quickly. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Uh huh. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. Twenty five years old when he began to reign. Young king, continue. And he reigned twenty and nine years. And he reigned twenty nine years. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, continue. His mother's name also was Abi. You know, son of do, do, you, do you know why do you know why they named the mother's name? The mother is the one who nurtured and tell him what to do. You remember I told you don't make your daughters marry them, marry their sons? And don't let your sons marry their daughters? There's a reason why. The Bible said his mother's name was Abby. Don't know something. His mother's name was Abby. I want to show you something. His mother's name was Abby. Abby means my father. A woman named my father. She was functioning as the father. But look at who her father was. Her father was Zachariah. And Zachariah means Jehovah remembers. So a godly mother whose father was a godly man, or a man who remembers that God always remembers. And he named his daughter Abby, my father. And her father's name was Zachariah. His name means God remembers. You see, the, 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 are, you, are you seeing the, trans, the, the, the transformation? The daddy raised the daughter right, and the daughter raised the son right. Never mention anything about his daddy. Tell you who his daddy was, but he tell you who his mother was. Not that they would tell you their lineage. He was the daughter of this and the son of this, but tell you who the mother was. And she raised him right. Read what he did. Verse 3. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did that what? That which was right. Uh huh. In the sight of the Lord, uh -huh. according to all that David his father did. Notice they always refer back to David. Stay with me. I'm almost finished. Go on. He removed the high places. The high places. Break the images. Break the images. Cut down the groves. Cut down the groves. And break in pieces the brazen serpent. Break in pieces the, 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 the brazen serpent that they used to worship. Continue. For unto those days the children of Israel uh -huh. they burned incense to it. Uh huh. And he called it Nehushtan. Continue. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, uh -huh. nor any that were before him. Go to six and seven. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him. 
but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. Uh -huh. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. When you serve in God, you can, you, can, you, can, you can afford to rebel against your enemy. You can, you can afford to rebel against those who will come for you. Because once you're serving God, they can try, but they won't conquer. Right. God is your helper. The Bible said he claimed to the Lord, meaning he grabbed up. He hold on to yes, God. Hallelujah. He didn't depart from God. The Bible said he hold on to God. And as long as he held on to God, God, whatever he did, he prospered. I didn't write it here. Yes. So you raised them right. And he held on to God and he prospered and did the right thing. And all that he did, God was with him. The Bible said there was none like him or none after him who claimed unto the Lord to do the right thing like his father David. But look what the Lord did. The Bible, it put, the Bible I likened him unto David, what David did. What are you holding on to? How steadfast is your relationship with God? What are you putting before God? What are you gripping and holding on to? Where is your alliance? Where is your allegiance? And if your allegiance is with God, how much, is your, how much of your allegiance is with God? Are you serving Him on a part time basis? Only a little bit here. I like the, 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 the rappers who say, or the preachers who say, a little, I serve a little dab of two there. A little dip in here, dab in here. No, no, no. God said, no, no, no. It's either all or nothing. You've got to look at me and see me as an all-sufficient God who can provide for you and give you whatever you want. You can't tell me, I'm going to serve you here now, but when things are going good, you're my God. When things are going bad, you're not my God. Oh, no, no. Check yourself and find out when things begin to go bad. What did you start to do again? When you put your trust in God and begin to serve God, your life on an upline climb. And as soon as you peak up here, God put some things and test you. You want to go higher? And he put, he allows some things to tempt you. You look and you look and he says, and, and the thing that you look at, this is how it goes. You rise up here and you're looking at something good. Uh -uh. Instead of looking up here, you're looking at the things that's tempting you. And it's just, it's looking, it's dropping, and your eyes begin to fall on it. And as your eyes begin to fall on it, you realize, oh, I was supposed to go, I was supposed to go up here. How do I get down here? Because of what you've been focusing on. Right. Shift your focus back to God. Shift your focus back to God. Whatever you've been doing, and your life is done and decline, and spiraling down, be refocused and shift your place back to God. Ask God, listen, I messed up here. Go back to the last place where you hear God speak to you. Go back to the last place where you used to try and God used to minister to you. Go back to the last place where you used to pray and fast and see His face and read His word. Go back to that place. Get back to the altar of God and let God know, Lord, I want to serve you. You preserve me. I've got to get back to that place. Amen. It's when you begin to do that. Then you realize that you know something. He said, I'll never leave you. God don't lie. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I want you to share something with you. The Bible talks about Hezekiah. After Hezekiah became strong and was doing well, the Bible said he got sick. And then the Bible said the Lord sent a prophet to him. And the prophet said, the Lord said to tell you, get your house in order. I'm almost finished, right? Prophet? I'm almost finished. Get your house in order because you're going to die. The Bible said Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said, Lord, and he prayed, said, Lord, am I going to right in your sight? Why? Give me, come on, Lord. I did all that was right in your sight. And I served him and I worshiped him. And the Bible said, when the prophet told him, get your life in order, I was about to leave him. The Bible said when Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and began to weep and talk to God. And before Ezekiah, before Isaiah the prophet reached out into the, in, into the courtyard to leave, God stopped him and said, go back and tell him, I've got, I've had, what, 30 some years to his life? 50. 50, about 50 more years to your life. And the prophet went back and told him, do you know why? God is the God who restores and adds years to your life when you repent, when you begin to seek his face, when you begin to trust him. Here's my final instruction to you. After Ezekiah died, the Bible said his son began to reign, Manasseh. 
after his son, after Ezekiah died and his son began to reign, I want to show you. Look at, look at 2 Kings chapter 21. Continue reading. From verse 1? Verse 1 to verse 3. And so look, what he did. I'm going to stop. What, once you finish, I'm going to stop here. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. Uh, 12 year old king. And reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And his mother's name was Hephziba. Uh -huh. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh -huh. After the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children uh -huh. of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah Notice the father word. had destroyed. Notice, this is Hezekiah's son. The Bible said, again, he began to read it. For he built up again, again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. So that is set a pattern and tear on the idols and wreck it and destroy it. I'm not going to serve no more idols anymore. I'm going to be faithful to my wife. I'm not going to fornicate anymore. I'm not going to live nasty anymore. I'm going to do what I got to do. I ripped on the idols and everything that's going. And the Bible said, and the son began to rebuild them. Turn away from God. Be careful what you're doing, people. Jesus is watching. Continue. Amen. And he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Go to four. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Go to six. And he made his son pass through the fire, and observed times, and used enchantments, and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He brought he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house, of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Stop you. What am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying to you this morning, God doesn't change. Amen. God don't change. Yes, his mercy endure forever. Yes, he's loving and kind God. Yes, he is. And his mercy endure forever. But when you prioritize other things over God and begin to put God second place in your life, the Bible says you turn away from him. And he calls the enemy to whip you. He called you to go into destitute, destitute, and, and things that happen to you. Yes, you're living in a time of grace, yes. But grace doesn't give you a license to continue to serve other God. Grace doesn't give you the ability or give you the license to uh, step and dip and dabble. Grace is extended to you so you can use the grace of God to rise to the level of what he wants you to do. Stand to your feet. The Lord said, tell my people, I will be with them as long as they be with me. The Lord said, tell my people, as long as they are with me, I will be with them. As long as they trust and serve me, I will provide and deliver them and help them. But I cannot function contrary to who I am. Tell my people, I love them, but I must always be first in their lives. For them to see the blessings and the bounties of God. You gotta be foolish. You gotta be crazy to serve other gods. You gotta be not your head to put other things before God. Especially in this season of what's going on. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord God of Israel, the Lord God who made the heavens and the earth and created all things, lift up the light of his countenance upon you and bless you and give you peace. The Lord God move upon your heart and cause you to refocus and do the right thing. The Lord God watch over you and protect you in your going out and in your coming in, in your rising up and in your lying down. The Lord God cause your enemies that come in one way to flee seven ways. The Lord God will remain with you as long as you remain with him. He will be for you as long as you are for him. The Lord keep you and guide you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and then they readjust. It takes a made up mind to serve God. You can't say, I'm going to do it. You've got a purpose in your heart that this is what I'm going to do and do it. Yeah. 